Hey guys, it's Mariah, your Dairy State Vegan, coming to you from my brand new kitchen. Check it out. Whole new background, so much brighter. I am already in love and we've only been here two days. So I just wanted to film a quick little recipe tutorial. This is actually the first dinner I cooked in our new house. Uh, the first two days were crazy with moving and unpacking. And so I had just like postmated pretty much everything. But tonight I'm gonna make some super simple baked burritos with fajita veggies. Now I did take some shortcuts on these because we are still kind of unpacking and moving in on top of working full time. Um, so there's some shortcuts in here that you don't have to take, but if you want to, you absolutely can. So I'm just gonna start by chopping up my fajita veggies. I just went super simple today and did a red pepper, a yellow pepper, and then a red onion. You could absolutely add tomatoes, zucchini, mushrooms, whatever you wanted. I just kept it simple today, especially because my husband and son aren't super into mushrooms, but that is my favorite fajita veggie. So I'm just gonna rough chop this onion into circles, and then I'll slice those in half, and that's gonna give me just some good chunks of onion for my burritos. I was struggling a little bit here, but we figured it out eventually. So we're just gonna rough chop this onion, and then we're gonna get everything in the pan sauteing while I do the rest of my burrito prep. I'm just gonna drizzle the pan a little bit with some olive oil. You can use whatever oil you want. Avocado oil would actually be really delicious. I just didn't have any on hand. Like I said, we just moved, so I don't even have everything unpacked. But my kitchen was the first to get mostly set up because we all know the kitchen is the most important room in the house. So I'm just gonna dump all these yummy veggies into the pan. And then typically I make my own fajita seasoning, but like I said, I just moved. I don't even know where all my spices are, so I cheated and just used a packet. Now, in hindsight, I definitely would have added a little more garlic and chili powder and cumin to this, but because I just moved, I don't really know where those are. So this turned out fine. I just added a little extra taco sauce for flavor to mine. So I'm gonna thoroughly stir in the spices and get everything all mixed and incorporated and start sauteing. And then once we're done with that, we'll start working on all the other steps. From start to finish, this meal took me maybe about 45 minutes, and that's only because of bake time. So I got this boil in a bag brown rice. Again, I usually make my own, but we were on a time restraint because I had to have dinner ready. My husband goes to bed at 8 or 8.30, um, and as you can see, it was 6.20, so I just wanted to make sure they were fed. So the rice is in the microwave for 10 minutes cooking, and I'm going to preheat the oven. I preheated it to 350, but then later changed the temperature to 425, and I definitely think that um, that was a wise choice just for getting color on the burritos and them cooking faster. So ignore that 350, preheat your oven to 425, and then while everything's preheating, I open my cans. I open my refried beans. Make sure you get the vegetarian ones because if they're not vegetarian, they have lard in that, and that is not vegetarian or vegan. So just make sure you read your labels. And then I also opened my green enchilada sauce. And my veggies are still sauteing and we are about ready to start prepping our tortillas. So this is definitely a step you don't want to skip. It's gonna make your tortillas soft and less likely to break when you're filling them, but it also adds a really good flavor to your tortilla. So I'm just gonna warm these directly over my burner. It takes maybe two minutes, you guys. It's definitely super essential to these just being the most delicious burritos. So you just turn your flame on and then you can throw the tortilla literally right on top of the burner. And you'll know it's about done when the sides start kind of folding down over the burner and wilting. This is not a step you can walk away from or you will have a tortilla fire in your kitchen, which will not only be dangerous, but smell awful. And I'm just warming four tortillas because I'm making four burritos. One for me, one for Cody, one for Jeff, and then one for Jeff's lunch in the morning. If it was school year, which it's not quite yet up here in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, the school starts on September 4th. I would have made five burritos because I would have made one for Cody's lunch the next day too. And there is that nice little char you wanna have on your tortillas. Now, if you tend to be a little more clumsy as a person, I highly recommend not using your fingers and using tongs instead so you don't burn yourself. 
I do this all the time, so I've kind of got it down to a science. This also definitely isn't a step I would let um, younger children do, just because they're more susceptible to being clumsy and burning themselves. So this is a grown-up only process. See how fast this is? It's so worth taking a little bit of time. And honestly, I wouldn't be doing anything if I wasn't wearing the tortillas anyways, because my rice is in the microwave for 10 minutes and my veg is just sauteing and getting nice and yummy and flavorful on my stove. And can I tell you how happy I am to have a gas stove again? I've been cooking with electric for the past year and I absolutely hate it. Gas is the way to go if you're a cook. All right, so let's get that last tortilla nice and browned up and taken care of. See it wilting? Oh, it's so perfect. And then we're gonna prep our Pyrex pan to bake our burritos. So this is a coconut oil spray. I like to use sprays just because I feel like I waste less product. I could be wrong, but it's just the way I feel, and I always, always use this one in particular. Then I'm gonna pull out some more of the fillings. So I got this Daya pepper jack cheese and this taco sauce that is gluten-free and very mild. Let me tell you about this Daya cheese. I had tried Daya cheese in the past, and I'm telling you, it tasted like feet. So I've never gotten it again, but I was watching an episode of The Vegan View, and they were trying out these new um, Daya, um, like their new formula, and they said it was really good. So thank you, ladies of The Vegan View, because this was so good, and I never would have tried it if you hadn't told me that Daya had stepped up their game, and man, have they. All right, so my rice is ready and we're just gonna season it with some lime juice, salt, and pepper. One thing to keep in mind if you're not someone that cooks a lot is you need to season every single layer. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with bland food. I probably would've put some cumin and onion powder and garlic in here if I knew where those spices were, but I didn't. So I just put a generous amount of these three and then I fluffed my rice with a fork to make sure everything was well incorporated. And then we are getting to the point of assembling burritos, you guys. This is how the magic happens. I am still awkwardly learning how to cook on camera for you guys too, so don't mind my like weird facial expressions and like, I don't know, awkwardness overall. This is my life, awkward panda Mariah. So we're just gonna fill our burritos with some rice and some beans. Put a generous amount of those in there. That's what's gonna keep you full. And then I also decided to add some spinach to our burritos. I always like throwing in healthy greens wherever I can, especially because I am trying to conceive. It's good to get all of my micronutrients. People often talk about macronutrients, carbs, protein, but y'all, you need to pay attention to those micronutrients. Make sure you're getting enough vitamins and minerals and all that other stuff. I added some taco sauce inside of the burrito because I like my burritos to be a little juicy and the taco sauce is what's gonna happen, make that happen for me, along with fajita veggies. Just make sure you don't overfill your burritos. I almost overfilled this one, but it's okay because my husband ate it and he was super full. And we're gonna top it with this magical Daya cheese. I can't even believe I like Daya cheese, but it's so good. You can see here I tried a bite just out of the bag and then I had to make my husband try a piece. I didn't show you guys that part, but I was like, babe, this is awesome. You need to try this. So we're gonna fold up our burrito and then place it seam side down in the pan so it doesn't pop open. I am no Chipotle burrito maker, but these were pretty delicious. And then boom, Magica TV, they are all assembled and ready to go into the oven. All right, so while they're baking in the oven, I'm gonna take all my leftover toppings and I'm gonna put them in this Pyrex bowl. This is so that I can make a burrito bowl or a quesadilla or whatever I want later in the next couple of days. 
It also saves me from too many extra dishes by just reusing the bowl I cooked my rice in. So there we have it. That's gonna be my lunch or Cody's lunch the next couple of days. Now once the burritos are cooked and browned, I took them out of the oven and topped them with some green enchilada sauce. You can skip this stuff if you want to. Heck, you can even skip baking them. Just make sure you heat up your beans if you don't bake them. But I think adding some enchilada sauce and then cooking them for another five minutes makes them so satisfying. I'm a big fan of wet burritos. So this just took the cake for me. And here they are, bubbling and hot and tasty. Then I just had an assortment of toppings. We all picked our own. And here's my dinner. So I hope you all like this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I do a lot of what I eat in a day and recipe videos.